Hey guys, long time no see unless you've been checking me out on Tuesdays, but I'm back with my birthday haul. All right, so here we are. I know it's been a bit, but for the past few months, um, I have been acquiring some things. Some were gifts, some I bought myself, um, but a lot of this is for my birthday. So I will be calling this my birthday haul because my birthday was in July. So here we go. <laughs> so um, first of all, I have a huge gift from Freddie. Thank you so much. So this is like the, Freddie sent me like a few different packages of books because he's the best, wonderful human being, absolutely. And this is actually one of the first things that he sent along, they sent it to Elmar's. Well, to the Nearman Condition um, uh, P.O. box and, you know, with the pandemic and <laughs> it being difficult to get together, finally Omar and I were having a chance to get together so I could get my books. So look at this. Freddie's a gem. Just <sighs> thank you, Freddie. So let's dig into gift from Freddie. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Catwoman in here. So we have um, some Brubaker Catwoman. I actually haven't read any of this. I'm a huge Catwoman person, so super stoked. Uh, and everyone really raves about this run. So I'm excited to kind of dig into that. And the Catwoman continues with Catwoman by my girl, the number one, Joelle Jones. This is volume one and two of the Catwoman run, um, back when Joelle Jones took over right after the Batcat wedding. Um, I read a couple of this online, but not in person, or not physically, so I'm um, really excited to dig into this. Joelle Jones is one of my favorite artists of all time. I loved her in, uh, what is it called, Lady Killer? Um, and also, just like me, Joelle Jones owns pugs, so I'm stoked for that. So next is The Midas Flesh. This is a boombox book. Um, I actually haven't heard anything about this. I love the cover, I love the shininess. I don't know if you can tell from where you guys are. Um, but looks fun, so Boombox is Boom's like younger audience line. Um, and you know, I tend to like everything from Boom, so stoked for that. And then also Freddie's along uh, The Inhumans. This is uh, The Inhumans by Right of Birth by Nocenti. And Mogan, I should stop trying to say names because I never know how to say them. Um, actually, I've never read any Inhumans outside of just like what Inhumans were placed in the Cosmic Saga. So like Annihilation, all of those omnibuses. Um, and then Fearless, which I had been dying to read. So I'm so thankful for this, Freddie. Um, because of course, any sort of female run Marvel book, I'm a big fan of. I loved A-Force. Um, I, lo I love a lot of like the single... Um, female-led books like Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, etc. Um, so really excited about this and to see, um, you know, a bunch of cool ladies do their thing. So thanks so much. And check out that Jen Bartel cover. Nice. And last but not least, Bitch Plant, which actually I haven't read, which feels silly, just because like, I feel like so many people recommend Bitch Planet and I have not read it. Um, but it's by Kelly Sue DeConnick, who I love, so I don't know where I've been on the planet, but now I finally get to read it. Um, so, this is all from Freddie. Thank you, Freddie. Seriously, I don't know what I did to deserve you as a friend <laughs> and a viewer, but uh, you're the best, and thank you. Sorry it took me so long to go get this from Omar, but I hope you forgive me. Um, so next, I guess I'll look at more gifts. Um, so, from friend and viewer, Jessica Ashcraft. She dropped these off at my door, which is very sweet of her. Uh, and this is Star Wars Lost Stars. This is the manga version, so there is a novel as well, which I recently bought. Um, and this is based, the original stories by Claudia Gray. Um, and this comes, like everyone's really, really recommended Claudia Gray's Star Wars work. And I haven't heard too much about the manga run of this. This is by Yen Press. Um, I'm really interested in this. I am a manga person and I'm a Star Wars person now. So personally, I think the art looks really great and I love a good romance story. Um, I hate it because like I, I'm really tempted to read this first, the manga version of Lost Stars before reading the book. 
But I do feel like maybe Jessica Ashcroft and also maybe Hayden English, another one of our viewers, might murder me. So <laughs> I think I'll wait. I'll read the novel first and then come back and read the manga. But super excited for that. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and next, I have a gift from Kristen, a.k.a. The Comic Slayer. She is my co-host on Fangirls Assemble on Sundays. That is when I am on the Omnibus Collectors Networks, so but every Sunday, pretty much, sometimes different dates. We do a live show, a lot of reviews, just me and Kristen. And she's one of my, I call her my platonic soulmate, because I feel like we like a lot of the same things. And she's a lovely person. Uh, but she gifted me two graphic novels. The first is uh, Living with Mochi. So this is published by Anders McNeil, publishing by Gemma Janae, Jean, I'm sorry. <laughs> And it is a, it's about the daily life with a sassy chubby pug named Mochi. It's based on a popular web comic. Um, <laughs> as you all may or may not know, I have a pug. I love pugs. And I also foster pugs as well. I have two um, foster pugs here at my house right now. They're a bonded pair, very cute. So this was a delight. I give it a five out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, it is just so much fun and so accurate like if you have owned a dog but more specifically a pug this book is so real it's so cute the art is really simplistic and fun and just so comical i think anyone can relate it's one of those like filled with very short comics throughout reminds me of like azamanga dayo um but it's just oh so cute uh and then next she got me the girl from the sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. I probably say her name wrong as well. This is um, from Graphics, which is an imprint of Scholastic. So um, I'm a big fan of Molly's work. And this one is about this 15-year-old girl who meets this Selkie. So basically the Selkie is like kind of like a mermaid-ish kind of deal. Looks like a seal in the water, um, but can come also like a human and come to land. And so... Um, she meets her and, and thinks that's a dream and kisses her because she thinks she's a cute girl. And through that kiss, Selkie, they will come to land. So they become fast friends and then something more um, while also dealing with um, the, the things that Selkie needs to, to deal with for her home world, for the water. And while Morgan, the human, deals with things like just kind of discovering herself and dealing with her sexuality and also how to come out to her friends and dealing with her own problems at home so this is really cute I love Molly's art and you know like always I'm always going to say that even if a book is for a younger audience it does not mean it's not also for you for adults this is beautiful artwork great colors I really really enjoyed this book um definitely recommend okay so more gifts <laughs> I'm so lucky you guys this is like the best birthday month I almost never get like books for my birthday. <laughs> I usually buy it for myself. So I've just been so touched and just so happy. Um, next is from Lionheart. Lionheart, I legit cried when I got this. Like, thank you so much. And it's the back girl, it turns on the bus <laughs> by Gail Simone. I love this run. I love Gail. I love back girl. And I didn't buy it because I'm trying to like watch my finances right now. <laughs> so um, I was like, no, I don't need this. And Leonard's like, I got you, girl. I was like, thank you. You didn't have to, but seriously, oh my gosh, this is so sweet of you. Just so thoughtful. Ugh, I'm just, it's so glad. I'm so glad to like have her on my shelf. And, and I've read this recently again, but I'm going to read it again now that I have an omnibus form. So I'm really excited. I'm almost too scared to open it. I hate, I was worried I'm going to ruin an omnibus, but thank you so much. And last but not least, I also got a gift from Sky G, who's always just been such a lovely, positive, wonderful presence in our live shows. And I just really appreciate you. And that's not just me like hyping you up <laughs> because you sent me a gift, but it was really sweet of you. Um, he sent me the first issue of Amy Chu's Red Sonia, which I have a review video for, coming out for. And it is uh, CGC. It says 9.8. And that's really awesome. I love Red Sonia. I have a whole shop dedicated to her. I love this run. This is incredibly thoughtful. And just thank you so much. This is so cool. And so thank you. Um, I do need advice on how to hang CGC things. What do you, How do regular people do it? Where do you put them? 
do you put them on your wall? How do you display them? Somebody please help because now I have like two CGCs and I'm like, how, what do you do? <laughs> but thank you. Oh, she looks so beautiful. I can't wait to add it to the rest of my Red Sonia stuff. So if anyone from work ever comes over, they're like, what's going on with this um, half naked barbarian lady? Um, but thank you, Sky G, and the card was so sweet and just, you know, all of you with the gifts, it's just, I never expect it, but you all really brought a smile to my face and thank you, you made my birthday month awesome. Okay, so next, there's so many things on this table. I haven't had a haul like this in forever. Um, before I get to the things that I've bought, some of which with um, gift money, you know who you are, thank you so much. Um, let's take a commercial break. Sponsor time. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your book so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels is currently running a special promotion for our viewers. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by us near mint condition at checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Cheap Graphic Novels is your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Thank you, Cheap Graphic Novels. All right, so I did, I bought quite a few things <laughs> this month, um, which has been great and so much fun. So I did buy a couple of the future state trades because I really wanted to read through all the future state, but it's really expensive to buy issue by issue, especially with some of them kind of being a pretty hefty price for what they are, I feel like. Um, so I was waiting for the trades to come out and luckily there's been some nice thick uh, future state trades. So I'm using that as my way to like go back through and read um, the things that I've missed. Um, the first one I bought that I have already read is the um, Future State Justice League. Now, deceptively, and I should have read the back of this, this does not contain some of the things I was hoping that it would. Because ideally, I would want this Justice League run to collect all of the stories involving these characters that are in this Future State Justice League. That's not necessarily the case. So this volume uh, collects Future State Flash, Future State Aquaman, Future State Green Lantern, and Future State Justice League, um, as well as the Green Lantern Corps and Justice League Dark backup stories. Um, personally, I didn't feel like this was enough, <laughs> but there were some fun stories in here, and I was glad to kind of catch up on um, these other characters and kind of what their deal is. I would like to see more of these characters, and if there's an omnibus of Future State, I might consider getting it, but I'm curious to see how you all felt about these stories in here. Um, the other one I picked up was uh, Future State Wonder Woman, and luckily this one did actually contain the books that I was hoping it would, naturally. Um, so it contains Future State Immortal Wonder Woman, uh, Future State Wonder Woman, and then Future State Super Wo Superman and Wonder Woman. So luckily I had already bought the floppies for the Yara Floor stories, but I hadn't read the Immortal Wonder Woman or Superman and Wonder Woman. So I haven't done, I haven't jumped into this yet, but I'm excited to. Uh, Yara Floor was amazing, so I hope that the rest are as satisfying. And of course, I'm excited to see Nubia because we're getting so much Nubia stuff this fall or next year, whatever it was announced. Um, so I'm really, really excited. We're getting a lot of great Amazonian characters and it's about time for Nubia to come back. So stoked. Okay, so I also bought a lot of kind of random stuff. I went to Half Price Books um, uh, with some of my birthday money and just decided to buy fun books. Not necessarily books that like I was going my way to look for, just kind of fun random things that I found. Um, so starting off, bring this over here. So starting off, I picked up My Boyfriend is a Bear. This is an Oni Press book and it... <laughs> Uh, it is labeled as romantic comedy. Now, I will warn you that um, I went into this uh, kind of assuming that the bear was like a metaphor for something. Like, it's this, it's this single girl. Um, she gets out of this really bad breakup, this relationship, and she's looking for a boyfriend who's great at like cuddling and hugs and is a good listener and likes to go out and eat and stuff like that. And she falls in love with a bear who follows her home from this like camping site. And... <laughs> 
usually with books like this, the bear, you know, means something else. Like maybe it's a guy that's like a bear, but that's not the case. It is a literal bear. She falls in love with this literal bear. Um, <laughs> and I really don't know how to properly describe it. But yeah, I've been wanting to read this for a while. I know that some people are creeped out by the premise, naturally so. Um, I am not a furry, but I did enjoy reading this book. I thought it was very funny. Um, it's definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but it's goofy. It's hilarious. What would you do if your boyfriend was a bear? How do you deal, you know, with your loneliness when he goes to hibernation? Is he meeting other girl bears? I don't know. Um, but it was cute. Um, it's just a nice little quick read. Uh, I had fun with it. So next is Lucky Penny. Uh, this is another Oni Press. It's a romantic comedy um, about this girl who lost her job in her apartment and her last relationship didn't go well. She's basically, even though her name is Penny, she's not lucky. <laughs> um, and she's living out of like a storage unit. And she meets this guy and she's trying to, you know, work out things with him and her own life and things just aren't really going well. I picked it because I love the art. Um, I tend to gravitate towards books like this. Um, it's just, it's it's a fun thing to pick up in between these big comic book events. Um, but it was, it was fun. It wasn't as, as, I didn't like as much as I thought I would, but it's still, I give it like a three or four out of five. Um, next, looks like I didn't have the other volume with me, but I did pick up Outer Darkness Volume 2 and the Outer Darkness 2 crossover. Um, which is a beautiful book. Um, love the style. I love the premise. This is by John Lehman, who wrote Chew, hence the crossover. Um, not a super big fan of these <laughs> books after I read them. Um, but, and unfortunately it's canceled. So that's a bummer. It doesn't, I don't get to see it evolve in any way and find closure. All right. So <laughs> next up is a book that I pre-ordered after I think James or someone else in the chat, um, during one of our live shows brought it up, but uh, the Slayers <laughs> Collector's Edition Volume 1. I'm a huge Slayers fan. I cosplay Lena Inverse. Um, I spent a lot of money on a very expensive wig commission for that cosplay. Um, so I was really excited to see this. I'll buy anything Slayers. But this is the, it's a reprinting of Volumes 1 through 3 of the Light Novels. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful hardcover. And this, is a, this is a light novel, not a manga. So... Um, you know, a little bit different than maybe some people were expecting, but there is a poster inside and there's still some beautiful, oh my gosh, I'm going to wreck this book. There are some beautiful illustrations inside and I've only just skimmed through this. Um, but from what I can tell, this is, it looks like a retelling of the beginning of Slayers. So I don't know. I'm excited to jump into it. I hope it's good. And even if it's not, um, how nice is this going to look on my shelf with all of my like Slayer's prints and my Lena Inverse Nendroid or whatever. So um, really excited that I caught wind of this in time to pre-order it. Uh, the rest of these are kind of random half price books buys. Um, first is Angel Smile Time. This is part of the IDW run of Angel with the hardcovers. Um, <laughs> These, you know, they're probably not good. <laughs> um, I collect all the Buffy books, and that includes IDW's Angel After the Fall, which is the, I guess, canonical <laughs> um, continuation of the show. Um, and I didn't have this one. I do have all of Angel After the Fall, and this is, I guess, this little side story where he's a puppet-like in the show. Um, I'm not expecting this to be good, but you know what? I, um, I'm in this deep, you guys, Okay. I had to buy every collected edition of Angel and Buffy um, that's come out and that is coming out, you know, like with Boom right now. And it's too late for me now. You know, normally I'm not somebody who feels a need to collect everything from one thing, but Angel and Buffy are the one exception. So luckily or unluckily, I already have most of the things um, and the things I do need are pretty readily available, except for like the Illyria trade, which is super out of print and I'll probably never get a chance to buy. But yeah, um, next is Teen Dog. This is uh, published by Boombox, again, which is Boom's, like, younger audience um, company, whatever. Uh, this is by Jake Lawrence, <laughs> and it is exactly what it looks like. This is comical. It's very 
um, Adventure Time. It's very like Cartoon Network kind of cartoon. And it's literally about Teen Dog, who's like too cool for school and has a skateboard and loves pizza and gets into crazy shenanigans with his friends. And I know it sounds really dumb, but man, this, this book delivered ex on exactly what I thought it would be. And I had so much fun. He's just having a rad time, you guys. He's having a rad time with his friends. He is being the stereotype that I was promised. And I love this book. Five, uh, five out of five for Teen Dog. What a riot this is. Absolutely recommend. Love it. Um, so next is another sort of like funny blind buy. This is also by Moobox. Um, and this is Help Us Great Warrior. I know it's kind of covered by Madeline Flores with Trillian Gunn. Um, again, sometimes I just like to buy fun, colorful books that are definitely meant for kids. And I never regret it. <laughs> um, I haven't read this yet, but everyone has told me wonderful things. It just, how cute is this? I love the colors. And again, in between these like, you know, <laughs> um, big two heavy stories, it's just fun to read something fun. And I'm really excited to jump into it. Man, there's still more stuff. How is there so many things? Okay, so. I have a pull list now. I think I've said that before in my last video, but I have a pull list, which is crazy because I'm usually like a trade waiter. I usually buy the collect editions, but there's some things ongoing right now that I want to keep up to date with. So I'm just going to run you through what I've got. Um, so I got Blue and Gold, um, issue one. This is the new series by Jer Dan Jurgens, which I'm so excited to see Dan Jurgens on Booster Gold again. So excited to have Blue Beetle. I miss them, I've missed their energy, and this is gonna be a really good time, I have no doubt. And then, of course, um, still continuing my Star Wars High Republic book, so I'm still collecting the Marvel Star Wars High Republic as well as Star Wars High Republic Adventures, which is IDW. So that is the like younger age one. And then, what I'm most excited about, floppy-wise, ladies and gentlemen, it's hot Roy summer. It's the summer of Roy Harper, okay? He is back. He is in everything. And I could not be happier. This summer, Roy Harper is in so many things, and I'm about to show you which. Um, so first of all, I accidentally ordered two copies because I was worried my local comic book store would not have it in stock. Um, but I did get the um, <laughs> 90s variant of the Green Arrow 80th anniversary. Um, and I bought this specifically because 90s Roy is here. Um, and I love him. I love this dumb 90s Arsenal look. You can also see that in his own comic, the Arsenal comic, which looks ridiculous. Um, a great book, great stories. I really enjoy it. If you like Green Arrow at all, or like the Green Arrow family, the 80th anniversary, wonderful. Then the Flash 2021 annual, which also has our lovely Roy Harper in it, which is great. And then of course, I am picking up all of Infinite Frontier. Um, I don't have the Infinite Frontier volume or issue one with me right now, but The Secret Files and issue two. So this is like the major DC summer event and my boy's in it and I won't spoil it for you, but some cool stuff's happening. And then I picked up Team Times Academy, uh, the 2021 yearbook. So this is a companion to the Teen Titans Academy series that's um, going on right now. I haven't read that yet, but after reading this, I really want to because I really enjoy it because the Teen Titans uh, basically create an academy. So on the faculty is like Donna Troy and Beast Boy and Starfire and Cyborg and Nightwing and then the headmistress is Starfire. Um, but I picked up this because it's the Roy Harper Academy inaugural class. So it's hot Roy summer, baby. All right, next. So, you know, some days you impulse order things that you don't need to, but that's how it goes. And so I found myself, as you do, uh, on TKO's website. And I've only ever read wave two of TKO, but I love their books. Some people may not agree with me, but I loved all of wave two. And so I saw that they had this new story out called Scales and Scoundrels. Now I will say, I got my one and two, that's what that's what's out right now. It's a different format than they've had before. Usually it's that um, larger oversized trade. 
Um, but I'm assuming this is Dungeons and Dragons adjacent. I know nothing. It was fully an impulse order, um, but it looks really cool. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I'll like it. I like the style already. And you know, TKO hasn't let me down yet. So to me, totally worth it. And also came with like these, I guess they're kind of like trading cards. So each of the books I bought from what I assume to be wave three all have these trading cards. So that includes um, Scales and Scoundrels, book one and two. And I also picked up another graphic novel from wave three. I'm assuming it's wave three. Uh, feel free uh, to correct me in the comments. Um, ooh, I'm not gonna pronounce this, but I'm assuming it's um, Jelia. I'm assuming the D and J are together, but this is a West African fantasy epic. So this is the same format as uh, Scales and Scoundrels. So again, less oversized than TKO's previous works. Um, this is by Juni Ba, who is a Senegalese born author and illustrator. And this is inspired by Western Af West African folklore. So this was another impulse. I was already picking up Scales and Scoundrels and this, the art, the color, everything looked too good to pass up. So I, I don't know anything about it but I'm excited to jump into it. And again, these also came with like little trading cards, which is really neat. Um, and while I was there, I figured why not pick up literally all of the TKO shorts. So you can buy all of these on their own or you can buy a whole bundle of them. And I couldn't, I couldn't resist. It was just time to treat myself to some TKO. Um, I was lucky enough that they had uh, sponsored me for Wave 2, so they'd given me the books to review. Um, and I thought, hey, I just love their work so much. I don't even want them to send it to me. I just want to I want to give them money. You all deserve money, TKO. You're fantastic. And because I bought all of that, they also threw in the TKO sketchbook number two, um, which I assume is just some sketch sketches from some of the shorts and books and things um but pretty cool and they always throw in like a sticker and a button but um hopefully i'll do a video after i review this sort of like tko wave of books i know what you're thinking i must be done right i'm not done there's more things how are there so many things um next rose of versailles volume four uh i had to pick this up because i was behind and we were reviewing rose of versailles on Fangirls Assemble, the show that's on Omnibus Collectors Network. So, man, if these aren't the most beautiful damn manga books ever, I don't know what is. Gorgeous, gorgeous hardcovers. And even if you, like, end up reading this, you're not big into it. This is a romance historical fiction from, like, the 70s. These look beautiful on the bookshelf. And, ooh, ooh, so shiny. And I also got, treat myself to... The Power Rangers deck building game by Renegade Studios. So this like just came out. We have had our eyes on this <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting for it to come out. I've played the board game, Power Rangers board game by Renegade Studios, which includes like art from Shattered Grid and things like that. And they announced this deck building game and I'm huge into deck building games. Um, we have all the expansions to the DC deck building game, which I super recommend if you're a DC fan. Um, we haven't played it yet, but we have watched some videos of playtesting, so I'm hoping that I'll like it. But basically, you um, it's a versus game, so someone plays as like the bad guys like Rita Repulsa, and somebody else plays as the Power Rangers. Um, or it can be kind of co-op with like three people being Power Rangers and one being the villain. Um, it should be fun. I'm excited. I love Power Rangers. I also got a couple of figures, just little things. Um, I got the Q Pasket Sailor Jupiter. I had this on pre-order originally from Amazon and then Amazon canceled it because they hate me. Um, but then there happened to be like an anime market. My cat's behind me now. It's like she knew the video was almost over. There was like this touring anime market kind of thing with like vendors, like a mini artist alley, mini vendors room like you would see at a con. So we stopped by, wasn't much, but they did have this figure for less than it would have been if I bought it online. I think this is like 25 bucks, so I had to. And I only paid $3 again to that, so it was great. And Robin, you are not a haul. Girl, oh no, you can say hi though. Wanna say hi? 
No? Okay, goodbye. Okay, and the last thing, this is a pretty big get for me, um, is the chopper, I hope it's not too shiny, you can see it. Um, the chopper pop uh, from Star Wars Rebels. So as some of you may have heard um, in my other videos before that I've been trying to collect um, all of the Star Wars Rebel, oh my gosh, Blech. all of these Star Wars Rebels pop figures, but most importantly, Hera, Chopper, and Zeb. The rest, the human ones, I'm, it's fine if I don't have them. And they're all pretty expensive um, compared to other pop figures. And Chopper's usually like 80 to 100 online, and I could not justify paying that. Um, but I found him in a store for $35. I was so worried. He was behind a, like a, a pane of glass. I was like, hey, can you just tell me where that Chopper figure is? And he's like, oh, I don't know. If it's behind the glass, it's going to be pretty pricey. And so he handed it to me. I took a look at the tag on the bottom. It was just $35. I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Absolutely no question. So now I kind of have like what I've wanted from the figures. But yeah, so this is my haul. Um, it's been a fantastic birthday. <laughs> I'm so pleased. And for everyone that sent in gifts and books, like I just, it means so much to me. My cat is in the way again. <laughs> um, like I've said before, I almost never get books for my birthday. And so it just, it made it really special, um, especially since this is the first year I've really been able to celebrate since, you know, there's like a pandemic. Um, but just thank you all so much. Um, and thanks for, you know, continuing to watch. If you ever want to see me again, um, besides like random videos, review videos here and there, um, I am here on Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, live um, for a show called Old Reader, New Reader, where I have a guest on. One of us is the old reader, one of us is the new reader, and we review something. Um, but I'm also on the Omnibus Collectors Network on Sundays, live at 8 p.m. Eastern, typically doing the same sort of review thing uh, with a show called Fangirl Simple. So I hope you like this video. Comment down below if you're catching this later. Tell me what you bought this month. I'd love to hear about it. Um, or if you have any recommendations on things that I've bought or if you've already read something I bought, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it if I haven't read it yet. Um, just so I know what to look forward to. No spoilers. Um, I'll be subscribed to future videos and I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And don't forget to check out our Patreon through which you can vote for reading orders from Omar or you can vote for which book I should read for old reader, new reader, um, and more. So thank you all so much and hope to see you all soon. Bye.